Good evening. This is Bashar Mitchell comes to you live from my YouTube channel. As I can see on my part series, the week that was college football history review, the 1980 college football season for week 12. The games are played on November 22nd, 1980. Week number 12. Here we go. We're going to start with Clemson. Clemson was a team that beat South Carolina, the number 14 team in the country. This was an upset by a score of 27. To six. Halloween came late for Gamecocks as Clemson, wearing all orange uniforms for the first time in school history, delivered plenty of tricks into in state rivals. Tigers' defense matched South Carolina's offense in points at safety Willie Underwood, 37 yard interception return, equal two field goals by Carolina kicker Eddie Leppard. Underwood also returned and set up 64 yards to set up a touchdown that broke 66 high. Despite being four years started, started at strong safety, Underwood had no interceptions in his career before this day. His final game, kicker Obed Oriri booted two field goals for Tigers to give him an NCAA record 23 for season and added to career mark of 60. South Carolina tell back George Rogers rushed for 168 yards. Next, Michigan, the number 10 team in the country. Beat number five, Ohio State, 9-3. Michigan's power rushing game and stingy defense dominated the Buckeyes, but game remained knotted at 3-3 at halftime as Wolverines quarterback John Wrangler suffered in two interceptions as Wrangler, Wrangler, who audible more than half plays, made up for interceptions in the third quarter with 56-yard drive. He began and ended with 13-yard passes. So wide receiver Anthony Carter. In between, he handed off to tailback Butch Woolfolk at 141 yards on 31 carries. Michigan safety Tony Jackson has set up drive with fumble recovery. Conservative Buckeyes never threatened in second half against Michigan defense that hadn't surrendered a touchdown in 18 quarters. The Buckeyes quarterback Art Sleister repeated 8 of 26 for 130 yards, including a 38-yard pass to tailback Calvin Murray in second quarter that Set up kicker Vic Janakiewski, Kiewski, 33-yard field goal. Next, Wisconsin beat Minnesota by a score of 25-7. Next, Oklahoma, the number nine team in the country. Oklahoma, number nine team in the country, beat Nebraska, the number four team in the country. 21-17, as quarterback Julius Caesar Watts lived up to his heroic name as he led gritty 80-yard winning drive in the final three minutes for a big road victory as his namesake managed in goal. Big gainer in drive was Watts' nimble pitch out to have back Buster Rhymes that went for 43 yards. Buster let Rhymes later score game winner for Sooners with one-yard dive over top. So the Huskers had led 10-0 at as I back Jarvis Redwine, 152 yards on 21 carries, enjoyed 89 yard touchdown run, and kicker Kevin Siebel, Siebel booted a 47 yard field goal. Watts, meanwhile, led two scoring drives. The next two scoring drives, he led JC Watts, first, which he capped with three yard touchdown run. Other than that, other than that, featured him racing 14 yards before pitching to the Grimes for 17 yard, yards more. Nebraska marched to the one-yard line in the fourth quarter before losing fumble that seemed to be game-ender. Until so bad off OU punt gave Huskers post-possession at soon as 17-yard line. So Nebraska quickly moved in for quarterback Jeff Quinn's go-ahead one-yard touchdown run. Cornhusker fans then prematurely threw oranges on the field, but J.C. Watt still has something to say. When was soon as ninth in the last 10 games in heavyweight series. This win was soon as ninth and last 10 games in heavyweight series. Next, we had Baylor shutting out Texas. Baylor, the number 11 team in the country, shut out number 20 Texas by a score of 16-0. The Baylor Bears' dream year continued as it compiled most single-season wins in school history and went undefeated in league at 8-0 for the first time since 1922. The Bears' fullback Dennis Gentry rushed for 130 yards. 130 yards, a 64-yard in the second quarter scoring run, broke a scoreless tie, and running back Walter Albert Crombie added 109 yards. 
for a school record season total of 1,187 yards. Baylor's defense added to its nation's leading total of 29 interceptions by picking off four passes. Most important interception was quarterback Cedric Max pick of Longhorns quarterback Rick Myagler with Texas on Bears' doorstep. So down only 7-0 in the fourth quarter, the Bears had wrapped up Southwest Conference title week before beating week before by beating Rice 16-6. Southern Methodist beat Arkansas by a score of 31-7. Mustangs routed Arkansas as three ponies runners top 100 yards rushing. As Hawks tried to mount defensive plan to throw a double tailback combo of Eric Dickinson and Craig James. Wide receiver Mitchell Bennett burning for 106 yards on three reverses, including an early 55-yard touchdown run on his first drive. Arkansas, meanwhile, trailed only 10-7 at halftime, following Hawks quarterback Tom Jones' 10-yard touchdown pass to wide receiver Gary Staggers. Staggers, Gary Stiggers. Uh, Razorbacks failed to stop SMU's Pony Express the backfield in second half and we surrendered three touchdown runs to James and Tut Dickerson. Next, UCLA, the number 18 team in the country, beat number 12 Southern California 20 to 17. Los Angeles schools were humbled into playing probation bowl, which is one on huge hot potato play by Bruins tailback Freeman McNeil. Southern California cornerback and future NFL coach Jeff Fisher tipped pass by UCLA quarterback Jay Schrader. McNeil also tipped ball himself before grabbing it, which is down sideline for 58 yard winning touchdown. Freeman McNeil, who earlier scored on a six yard run, outgained tailback Marcus Allen by 111 yards to the 72 yards in part because UCLA was able to construct eight man defensive front. Superb UCLA defense has set up McNeil's heroics moments earlier by stopping USC deep in Bruins territory on defensive back Loop. Loop egg. Sanchez's interception, weak sweet victory, served as Bruins' first in series since 1975, but was not wrapped up until the Trojans ran out of time on UCLA 29-yard line. And finally, California defeated the University of Stanford 28-23. With this odd rivalry, experts could toss out win-loss records because of point spreads, even quarterback pedigrees because California quarterback Jay Torchio Scored winning the three yard touchdown run with 441 left. Tochio faked handoff to tailback John Tuckle and ran around in untouched. It cost Stanford a possible bowl bid and sent star quarterback John Elway to his second straight series loss. Elway completed 28 of 44 for 257 yards, 257 yards, scrambled for 74 yards rushing. But his final attempt was passed as he wished he could have had back. In the face of pressure by his cow safety, Kevin Moen, Elway misfired on fourth down pass from Bears' six-yard line in game's final moments. Now, Elway had back and had back Vincent White, the standard Bears of Cardinals, rally from 21-7 deficit to 23-21 lead, messed up handoff deep in their home and the defensive, de- pack, defensive tackle, big part defensive tackle, Dupree Marshall, recovered to set up Torchillo's winning touchdown. White, meanwhile, rushed for 83 yards, Caught nine passes for 109 yards, scoring three touchdowns. So that includes a look at week 12, the games that were played on November 22nd, 1980, the week that was college football season review, the 1980 college football season for week 12, the games that were played on November 22nd, 1980. Let's get into the top 24, excuse me, top 25 as of November 24th, 1980. The AP poll for November 24th, 1980. The top 20 looks like this. Big part of the top 20, not the top 25. The top 20. Here we go. Number 20 was Southern Methodist. 19, Southern South Carolina. 18, Florida. 17, Southern California. 16, Mississippi State. 15, Washington, UCLA. 14, 13, North Carolina. 12, Brigham Young. 11, Ohio State. 10, Nebraska. 9, Alabama. 8, Baylor, 7, Michigan, 6, Oklahoma, 5, Penn State, 4, Penn, Pittsburgh, number 3, Florida State, number 2, Notre Dame, and number 1, Georgia.
That concludes the look at Week 12 College Football Season Review, the 1980 College Football Season. The games are played on November 22nd, 1980, Week 12. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the channel. We'll be on this magnitude tomorrow. Until then, talk to you soon.